let's start by solving this question together about flat plate solar collectors. Question one, the solar radiation on a flat collector is 2.1 meter cubed of aperture is 800 watts per meter squared. The collector is tilted 40 degrees and south oriented. The angle of incidence of the radiation is 20 degrees. The following data is also known, the ambient temperature, overall heat loss, absorbability temperature, collector inlet temperature, mass flow rate, glass cover, refraction index, and is equal to 1.526. Extension of the coefficient by cover is 0 0.037. The absorber absorbitance is 0 0.92. Specific heat of fluid is 4,180. Air refraction index is 1. Um, let's start off by trying to write the givens neatly. We have an area of 2.1 meters squared, solar radiation of 800 watt per meter squared, beta is 40, and it's south oriented, which means it's facing south. That's going to be in handy with the incident angle. And we also have an incident angle actually of 20. We have an ambient temperature of 12 Celsius, UL of 4.32 watts per meter squared per Kelvin. We have TP of 80 Celsius and the TN of 28 celsius mass flow rate of 0 0.014 kilograms per second meter squared we have an n2 of 1.526 kl of 0 0.037 absorbitance which is alpha is equal to 0 0.92 we have a CP of 4180, that's for water, and we have N1 as 1. So A, determine the fluid and the temperature, B, determine the solar collector efficiency for the given conditions. So let's start first by the temperature. So we need T out. Okay, so let's talk this through. To find T out, we need to use one of, one of these three equations, which are, I'm going to list them here, QU is equal to MCP TF out minus TFN. QU is equal to AC minus UL TP minus TE, or QU is equal to FR AC S minus UL TFI minus T. Well, we know that we don't have any information here that would help me to get F FR because in order to get FR, we need F prime. In order for F prime, we need M. We need, we need a lot of things. And so we can just exclude this one. We can use these two actually. First, we can use this one to try to get QU, and then by substituting QU here, we can find the TF out. So, yeah, what's missing here is S. To get S, S is tau times alpha. Alpha is already given in the question, 0 0.92. To get tau, we need to solve in a bit complicated way, so we're going to do that. Okay, so we stopped here, and we were going to solve to get tau. It's not actually complicated, it's just long. Um, to solve tau, we need to... Let's write down the equations so we know what's missing and we can find. Tau is actually equal to tau a times tau r. Tau a 
is equal to e to the power of negative kl over cosine theta 2. Tau r is actually equal to half 1 minus r parallel over 1 plus r parallel plus 1 minus r perpendicular over 1 plus r perpendicular. We have theta 2 missing, we have r parallel missing, and r perpendicular missing. First, let's start solving for theta 2. We have this equation to get theta 2, which is n1 sine theta 1. I think it's called the wine law, if I'm not mistaken. It's equal to n2 sine theta 2. n1 is given here as 1 sine theta 1 is given as 20 is equal to n2 sine Oh, sorry. N2 is given as 1.526 sine theta 2. Solving for this, theta 2 is going to be equal to 12.95. That's it. We have everything to find tau A. So plugging everything in, E to the power of negative k is given as 0 0.037 over cosine 12.95 plugging that in the calculator we're going to end up with tau alpha 0 tau a sorry 0 0.9627 okay moving on to tau r the equation for r parallel is tan square theta 2 minus theta 1 over tan square theta 2 plus theta 1. Plugging everything in, theta 2 is 12.95, that's how we found. Theta 1 is 20. You plug that in your calculator and you get a 0 0.0364 for our perpendicular it's similar but it's with sine theta 2 minus theta 1 over sine theta 2 plus theta 1 plugging everything in we're getting an answer of 0 0.0509 now plugging these into tau r which is half as we mentioned here 1 minus r parallel 0 0.034 over 1 plus 0 0.034 mm -hmm. plus 1 minus 0 0.0509 over 1 plus calculator 0 0.9164 okay we got tau r. Now we just got to multiply tau r and tau e together to get the transmittivity, which is 0 0.9164 tau r times 0 0.9627 tau e. We get an answer of 0 0.88226. Now this is at any incidence. We need this to be at a tau alpha average. Tau alpha average is equal to tau alpha at the beam times 0 0.96. And to get this, tau alpha at the beam is equal to 1.01 .01 times tau alpha at any incidence, which is the tau that we just got, 0 0.88226, and the alpha that we have in the question, which is 0 0.96. We multiply that with 1.01, .01, we get an answer of 0 0.8.
0.81979. So this is tau alpha at the beam. Multiplying 0 0.81979 by 0 0.96, we get 0 0.7869. This is the tau alpha average that we are actually looking for. Now, in order to get the S, because this was all of this, the aim of this is to get the S here, if you guys remember. So, S is basically tau alpha average times I. So, 0 0.7869 times the radiation that's given in the question, which is 800. We get an answer of 629. 0.552 watts per meter squared. Now going up, um, substituting everything in this is going to give us QU, as we said. So let's try to do that. QU is equal to ACS minus UL T plate minus T ambient. AC is given as 2.1. S is 629.52 minus UL is given as 4.32. T plate is given as 80. T ambient is 12. Substitution 705.96 watts. Now we have QU. We can substitute it here. We have mass flow rate, we have CP, we have T inlet, which is 28. We can just simply substitute to find T out. So QU is equal to MCP T out minus T in. QU 705.96 is equal to mass flow rate is given as 0 0.014, yes. Yeah. 0 0.014-4180 CP T out minus TN, which is 28. T out is 33.73 Celsius. So this is the first requirement, A. And for part B, it's roughly simple. The efficiency is equal to Q over A area, which is also equal to Q over I. Um, this Q is corresponding to Q over area. So it's watt per meter squared. Anyways, just substituting everything here, you will get an efficiency of 41.97%.